Okay, before I go any further, I'm going to glue in the servos. <coughs> That's the back, so I'm going to go in that way, like so. <coughs> then I can just put a bit of glue on the back to hold them in. Could have put them in afterwards, put them in and put a little bit of glue around there, I guess. I have actually tested these servos to make sure that they're working okay. Because I guess sometimes you get a dud, although you know they are new ones, but you do get a dud sometimes. which way around they go, although the, the leads are going to go that way, so we might as well have the leads facing that way. And again, put just a bit of glue around either end. In the old days, servos were that expensive, we had to um, Swap them from one model to another. Uh, I think in the old days I had um, the luxury of having two um, receivers and two transmitters uh, because we couldn't. Uh, there was no uh, multifunctions on the on the transmitters, uh, and I probably had about eight servos in total. We were probably paying in the old days sixty or seventy dollars for a servo. These days, these things are about two dollars fifty or something each. Um, so we can afford to glue them in and have them in every model. I, I have a receiver in every model, and of course, uh, the fact that we've got ten, twenty, thirty uh, channels on a transmitter now, we can uh, we can just use the one transmitter for everything. Uh, Totally spoiled now. <laughs> uh, as you can see, I've already put the holes in there for the servo wires to go through because what I'm going to do, I'm going to fit this bottom one, and I really don't want too much obstruction in there um, for the air to get to the fan. Um, so the servos are actually behind this duct, um, and the cables will go through. And all the cables for the EDF and everything else will actually run <coughs> through the top uh, rather than through the bottom and then that will leave the bottom pretty clear inside there right through. So we won't have any obstructions. I might just put a couple of uh, vent holes somewhere to, uh, to get some air coming through to cool the, uh, the ESC and the battery. Uh, but first of all we'll get the bottom in place. What I'm going to do now first is glue on the rear former. Again I'm, going, I'm not going to cut that out. now to keep it nice and strong.
looking quite good. And so, to make sure I'm going to get this in the right place now, um, I'm going to fit this front section. What I've done, I've cleared out and I've cut the little turning file, just cleared out the slot. And I've made it. So the kind of on an angle. Remember we have to cut these on an angle. So I've just sort of finished that off and down the edge in the front there. That slides on very nicely. Right through. I'm going to glue the top section first. In there. And then what I'll do, I'll run a bead of glue around the bottom section. That there, if you remember, we marked that through from our pattern. So that should be the correct position for it. Up here for <coughs> okay, I'm going to run a bead to go down there. Okay, that's the top on. Now, get that central. Now, bead across the back.
what I've done, I've just got that equal between the two slots there for the former, just to make sure we're central. So there, just between the two slots tells me where the centre is. And I can look down there and see what the centre line is in line there. <coughs> Okay, I'll now run a bead down here. Make sure it's nice and straight. piece of different cut the top of there and I think we may need just a little bit of sanding across the top of that. Not going to take a lot of just a little bit of level across there. edge there and that edge there and then it goes down from that point there through to that point there so I'm going to draw a line from there to there Certainly would have been better if I could have left the, these top formers off, so I could have actually set it flat on the on the bench. But uh, we'll know next time. 